All right, one story, of course, that has caught everyone over the last few days is a story of the killing of Cecil out of Zimbabwe. A Minnesota dentist is definitely the uh, apologizing to his patients, but definitely has been the uh, target of protesters who uh, recently just flocked to his Minnesota practice just yesterday once it was revealed that it was an American who had killed this well-known line. And it's raising all sorts of questions on safaris to Zimbabwe and to places in Africa in order to hunt simply to get a trophy. And it's not just about the hunting. It was the way it was done. It was the way that line was lured out of a protected area. So this morning, we wanted to examine this a little bit further, but we wanted to take a look at safaris to Africa. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of people will think the only thing you can do on safari is to shoot and kill an animal no matter what. Well, that's, that's not the case. We wanted to bring someone in who could help set us straight on a few things. And she is a woman who actually plans trips to Africa uh, and, and to places like that, but not for hunting. Mary Jean Tully is the CEO of Tully Luxury Travel. Hi, how are you? Hi, nice to meet you. Okay, so this is what we want to clarify. If I called you and I said, listen, I want to go hunt lions, what would you say to me? First of all, I would try to talk you out of it, but it had never happened with my company. Okay. It, it is just something, African safaris, first of all, Tully Luxury Travel, we only deal with companies that believe heavily in conservation, sustainability, and to do something to preserve these animals. So what kind of people are going on these safaris? And I'm not talking about the hunting ones like, like this, 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 uh, this dentist, but the people who want to go, they're spending a lot of money in some cases. Oh, yes, they are, but it changes you. It's like nothing you've ever done in life. It's like sta stepping into the National Geographic. It's, you know, we're all wowed by restaurants and great hotels and wonderful things to see and do, but to be one with the animals, to sit there with your children and to look at a pride of lions with their cubs and experience this one-on-one -on -one together in, in God's natural environment, and to go back and talk about it. There's nobody's on their phones, nobody's playing games. It's an excitement that's created. It's to see these animals in their natural habitat is like nothing you'll ever experience anywhere. What, first of all, what is your reaction to the story about Cecil? Sick to my stomach. I just, Had you, know, you heard of Cecil before? Yes, okay. yes. Um, in fact, we have many clients who have gone and to see Cecil because, you know, animals stay in their territories. I mean, lion prides will move a little bit, but what nobody really realizes is not only did this man uh, kill Cecil, but Cecil just had uh, in his pride six cubs. So now this is going to make the pride of lions. Another male is going to come in and he's going to kill those cubs because they want their blood lineage. So this one trophy hunting has virtually changed everything. And people don't realize this. You know, people think that, you know, oh, I want this, and they think they're helping conservation. This man paid $55,000 to do that. If he would have taken that $55,000 and gone into a community, what that could have changed the lives of so many people, it's not about conservation. And I think a lot of these hunters are, are given misinformation. Are you a member, uh, is there a membership, is there an association, an organization of safari groups such as yours, and is there any pressure you can put maybe on to, to stop the hunt? We do everything that we can. Uh, I'm part of an organization called uh, Safari Professionals of the Americas. but. It's individually. It's me sending people to Africa. It's educating them, you know, uh, through it, be it social media, be it being the voice of these animals. Uh, you've seen all the celebrities right now. Look, and, you know, look at Twitter today and, and yesterday. Everybody's taking a stance because they're just horrified. The royal family. Uh, Prince Harry is in Namibia right now for the next three months to talk about, you know, conservation of, of the poaching of elephants and rhino. Uh, Prince William has dedicated his stuff. David Beckham. Everybody. It's, it's in mass proportion. People don't realize. Can you imagine your kids not being able to see an elephant in 10 years? Most definitely. All 96 right, are be, killed a day. That would be horrible. And you know what? And I love the fact you're seeing them in their environment rather than in a zoo Absolutely. here where they don't belong. Well, I'm glad we took them out of the Toronto Zoo yeah. because African elephants don't need to be in the cold. And I think that with a lot of people, they just need to be educated. They just, you know, canned lion hunting is another big thing. Botswana as a, as a company. Oh, hunting? this is a big one. Canned lion hunting, five years ago even, I would have been thrilled to go somewhere and hold little uh, lion cubs and take my pictures and do whatever, not realizing the story behind it. So what happens is lions give birth. They immediately take these places. They take the, the little cubs away from the mom. They let children, tourists come in and feed them, hand hold them with the bottles. You think this is so all well and good. takes them out of the wild. Takes them out of the wild. Yeah. Then they take these mothers, the mothers stop lactating, and they just get them to mate again. But these little lion cubs, they do pictures, but then, but then, 
these little cubs, after a while, after they're about eight, nine months old, all of a sudden they're starting to become dangerous. They're put in a fenced-in area where hunters from all over the world come in, and it's called canned lion hunting. Oh, my gosh. Sit there and shoot these animals that are, in, that are already in fenced-in areas. Wow. It's deplorable. So people need to be educated, no, and there's absolutely no way would we even book at, at our company, would we even book if somebody says, oh, I would love to pet animals. Do you really want to know the story behind it? They don't know the story behind it. And there are people that have done wonderful things that will take animals in, you know, who have been, you know, um, orphaned and, and raised them and do it, but they can never be released back into the wild. Never. Mary Jean, thank you so much for this. Mary Jean Tully from thank you. Uh, Tully Luxury Travel. Thank, thank you, you very much. Uh, we're going to check on the forecast. Here's Frank.